Hey traders, Marcello here, founder of the Day Trading Academy. Today, we're gonna to be answering all your questions in the series and Ask Marcello, talking about are the markets rigged? So this question is from Jay. Jay asks, How rigged are the markets? Do brokers see where you have orders pending and do they use that information to make the markets move in their favor? So Jay, I, I think with the revelation of the book that came out about high frequency trading, I, with the experience that I have, I do believe that the markets are rigged. I don't necessarily, let, let's put it this way, I don't necessarily know if the right way to phrase it is that they're rigged. There is manipulation in the market, but I don't necessarily think that it's because they're forcibly rigging the market. So they might do that sometimes, but there's also situations now that I have been proved but aren't necessarily uh, formally admitted to that why, for example, did the oil markets drop so rapidly from, I think, 115 to 25 from one moment to the next? Is it really because there was less demand for oil or was it that they were rigging the market? So there's, there's a few different things that I believe, right? This is my opinion. Um, if you guys want to look for research or find out, go ahead and look on Google, right? So I believe that there are participants in the market that manipulate the market in their favor. Obviously, high frequency trading is a, and my, the way I phrase it, a legal form of manipulation because literally what happens with high frequency trading is that they see your order, they come in, they buy it, and they resell it to you. And that very, very razor thin margin of profit for that company, it might be 0 0.0001 cent, but they do that a billion times and that's a hundred million dollars hundreds of millions of dollars in profits for them and that's a loss for us because we're not getting the best price. So I, there are also going to be situations, Jay, where it may not necessarily be a case of manipulation but it might just be that someone's moving the market and they have deeper pockets than we do, right? So someone might want to run a certain market at a certain price for whatever reason and because they have deeper pockets, they can hold the positions longer than we can. So that may be another situation, for example. There's something called uh, front running, which is similar to high frequency trading, where they, they kind of front run your order. They're spoofing, where they, they place your order. You know, there, there's this mentality or this idea that if you know where the big guys are placing their orders, you'll be able to trade with them. But most people don't know about spoofing where they, they don't put in their order or they cancel it at the last second, right? And so we see all the orders at this price. You place it there because you think that's where the professionals are trading at. And then the market comes down, they cancel their order. It fills you, but then they go in the other direction. I 100% believe that the markets are rigged, but they, it may not necessarily be and sometimes, right? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, that they may not necessarily be rigged on purpose to make us lose money. Um, I do believe that there's going to be professional traders that are going to move the market on purpose in their favor. That might not necessarily mean that they're trying to make us lose money, but they're moving the market in their favor. So they're are certain markets that I do believe are more rigged than others. In, in my personal opinion, I do not believe that you should trade binary options, CFDs, or Forex. These are three of the markets that are very lightly regulated. So if you look online or if you Google this, Jay, the FBI are investing the binary options market because of all the fraud that occurs in that market. Uh, one of the things that happens in these three markets that does not happen in others is that exactly what your second question was saying about do, do they see where you have your orders pending and use that information to make the markets move more in their favor. There, there's something in the markets called spread. So imagine you're buying a house, right? Let's say it's listed on the market for $220,000, 
That's the ask price, right? So there's a bid and there's an ask. Somebody wants to sell the house for $220,000. There's your ask, right? They're asking for that. Somebody wants to buy the house and they're not willing to pay $220,000. They, they put in a, a, an offer, they put in a bid at $180,000. So you have somebody that wants to buy at 180, you want somebody to sell at 220, that difference is called the spread. There is in the market what's called the bid ask spread between buyers and sellers, and that happens in every market around the world. Uh, you know, uh, options, stocks, whatever. It's, it's a difference between supply and demand. So that difference in the price of the house between 180,000 and 220,000 is called the spread. Same thing if we want to buy Apple stock, for example, at 100, but someone wants to sell it at 110, the spread is $10. So with CFDs, binary options, and also Forex, there's something that I call double spread. So we have the normal spread of the market, which is normal, but we also have an additional spread of what the broker provides. So let's say, for example, in the same example of buying the house, you know, we have the 220 ask price, we have the $180 bid, and then because you put in a bid, a real estate broker wants to automatically charge you $10,000 just because you put in the order. Because, I don't know, you use the thing online that automatically gave them the right to choose to charge you even though you never talk to them ever. That would be what happens with Forex, CFDs, and binary options. So the brokers themselves see where your order is at and they literally manipulate the spread. So instead of you buying the house at $180,000, you buy it for a lot more than what you normally would because you have that additional spread that that, in this case, the broker provides. So I recommend that people don't trade any of those three markets for that reason. I believe that it's a lot harder and binary options and CFD is almost impossible to make money in those markets because of the market manipulation. We also have governments now that are involved. You know, it's not official, but if you look at a lot of the documents from WikiLeaks, you, you can see that. Uh, you can look online, Jay, the, the FBI is investigating the, the binary options market. They either finished or they are still doing it if you want to look that up. The fraud that's occurred in the Forex market is absolutely astronomical. I recently saw another article about traders, I believe it was from HSBC, they earned over half a million dollars from front running their own customers' orders. So I believe that trading in these markets are a lot more difficult than others, especially for beginners. Forex, I do believe that you can make money in, but you have to be very experienced because the majority of the participants in the Forex market are actually uh, institutional traders and basically if you don't know the difference between those two J retail traders are guys like you and I that start off with really small accounts we sit in our boxes at home and institutional traders are the guys who works for institutions banks uh, hedge funds and they're moving around tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars so uh, short answer is yes long answer is uh, there may be situations in the market where you, they might move it in their favor, but doesn't necessarily mean it's rigged. But I do believe that it is rigged. And, and one small thing to add there as well, Jay, one of the reasons why we like to trade with things called chick tick charts is because most people trade with candlestick charts and they don't see all the information that appears in the market. So if somebody's trying to move the market and they put in a billion dollars in, in an order or a billion shares of stock, whatever, the only thing you're gonna see with candlesticks is the, the bar moves like this. So inside of five minutes, if there's one million transactions, the only thing you're gonna see is one bar or five minutes, right? So in the span of a day, most people who use candlesticks are only gonna see 68 bars of 60 minutes, 16 bars of 30 minutes, uh, 48 bars of 10 minutes, and that never changes. Whereas if you use something like tick charts that are based on transactions, not time frames you're actually gonna be able to see all of the transactions. So this provides a huge advantage because I believe that by looking at all of the transactions, you're gonna be able to actually see the manipulation happen. So this has various advantages because obviously inside of those five minutes when you guys only see one bar, 
or you know five bars of one minute, we see every single transaction that's placed in the market. And because we can see every transaction that's placed in the market, we can actually see the personality of the market. We can see the intention of the orders. We can see the structure, the 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 all of that stuff. So I would recommend you looking at tick charts. Me personally, in my experience, I've, I'm close to closing on 16 years in this industry, whether it's teaching traders or uh, actually trading or uh, being a student myself, buying courses, stuff like that, right? This was a long time ago. So I believe that you should start with options, sorry, you should start with stocks or futures. That's my opinion, the best markets that you can actually trade on, especially when you first start. I personally don't teach stocks, I teach more futures. So I teach people how to learn how to trade futures, but also at the same time, how to read the market properly. So the system that we use, we call it Congressive, allows you to start understanding how the market works. And then once you understand how the market works, you can literally trade anything you want. Because I've had traders that do Forex, well one that stayed in Forex to be honest with you. Uh, my man in Tokyo, shout out. Uh, other than that, I've had guys trade uh, stocks, but most guys stay in futures because it's much higher leverage and obviously you can make a lot more money with less. Obviously on the flip side, don't forget, you know, trading is risky. You can lose money just because you made money before doesn't mean you're going to make it in the future. So you can definitely lose money as well. So really good question, Jay. Thank you. I hope, um, this was a pretty thorough answer. So I, I'm, I hope you, I'm, I'm hoping you liked it, my man. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to add, to mark them with Ask Marcello, hashtag Ask Marcello. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.